Today, we're talking about being sweet to your feet. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Before we get rocking and rolling and talking about the topic of this week's briefing room, first I gotta give a shout out to TriggerCon 2018, which is in Bellevue, Washington, July 26th through the 29th, 2018. This show is open to the public. It is absolutely an amazing experience. There's gonna be a ton of vendors there showing off new and innovative products, which is kind of the theme of the whole show. So if you are in the Pacific Northwest or the West Coast in general, make sure you make your way up to Washington, July 26th through the 29th, 2018, for TriggerCon, and we will be there covering the event as well. So if you run into me, please make sure to say hello. So that being said, let's get into this topic, which is talking about footwear and taking care of your feet. Now it is spring, which unfortunately in my state, there's still a bunch of snow, so it really feels like winter. But for most people, spring means getting back out to the range, starting their training sessions, maybe the competitive shooting season is starting for you, or just generally being outside. And what kind of spawned this topic was a post that Andy, an instructor uh, that teaches with me, posted on our Facebook page. And it showed a student that showed up to a training class, not our training class, with a pair of brand new boots from, I think it was Walmart. And by the end of the day, they ended up having to duct tape the sole because the shoes were just falling apart. And that kind of got me thinking that, you know, uh, one of the things that we probably don't talk about as much is taking care of your feet. Now, when it comes to footwear, I generally have never, ever, ever regretted in my life spending money on either socks or footwear, okay? I zero, times have ever said, you know, I spent way too much money on my feet and my feet are comfortable. However, there have been numerous times when I have regretted, you know, having crappy footwear, crappy shoes, crappy boots, or getting a pair that is not properly fit for me, uh, that's not comfortable because we all complain about that. You all know what it's like when your dogs are barking at the end of a, a range day or a match or whatever. So one of the things that I am a firm believer of is always, always, always be willing to invest in your feet and your gear. And in my opinion, one of the vital functions of your shooting gear needs to be your 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 feet. I mean, it's just it's so important. You're on them all day. And that starts with a good quality sock. So first things before we get into shoes and stuff is let's talk about socks. Now, these socks here are a merino wool blend. I'm a firm believer in using a good quality wool sock, even in the summer. Like these are literally the socks that I wear year round, winter and summer. And these are a, I believe, close to 100% merino wool sock that I got at an outdoors camping type store. They're very popular for hikers, campers, uh, things like that. And then this is a merino wool blend. I don't recall the exact percentage of merino wool to cotton. Uh, there might be a little bit of spandex in there too, but I got these at Costco. I believe they are a seasonal item. They don't have them year round, but these socks have actually held up really well as well. So why is it important to use a wool sock? You know, you're probably thinking, well, why would you wear a wool sock in the summer? Well, number one, a thicker sock like this is gonna offer you more cushion and more padding while you're on your feet, whereas a cotton sock is just gonna compress down, especially if you start to sweat or there's a little bit of moisture introduced. That cotton sock is just gonna squish and it's basically gonna be uh, a hard sock of you know really what it is and it's going to stay wet and it's going to you know stay sweaty whereas a merino wool sock is a wicking sock they do really well with your sweat and they can still offer some insulation value in the winter when they get cold but in the summer i find that my feet feel cooler wearing a merino wool sock than a cotton sock and they don't feel as icky because that cotton sock just gets all sticky and it gets stuck to your foot and you kind of feel that like foot rot type feeling I get that with cotton socks. Uh, I don't get that with these. So I, I'm really, really a firm believer in investing in good quality socks. And there's all sorts of good quality sock brands out there, but I'm a big, big fan of Merino wool. So look for good quality socks. Now, when it comes to footwear, um, you know, I started my very first three gun competition. I wore basically a, a pair of hiking shoes like this and little did I know that the range would be covered with mud and we'd be, you know, just outside all day. I mean, I didn't know what I didn't know and I thought I'd be, you know, just served well with these shoes, a shoe similar to this. And I, well, I, I had okay traction. I wish I would have had more ankle support. I wish I would have had just kind of general 
you know, a, more of a boot because we were in that thick mud, water, puddles, etc. So this wasn't necessarily the best choice. Now, some matches I go to, I will wear an outdoor shoe like this because I'm wearing shorts and it's a hot weather and I just need good traction. I want to be kind of fast. Uh, you know, a shoe like this isn't bad. So something like this that can kind of hold up is better than like a loafer. Believe it or not, I've seen a lot of weird footwear come through my classes and I'll show some pictures of the various footwear that I have seen. Everything from a, a business type loafer shoe to tennis shoes or whatever. And if you're gonna be outside in a gravel pit or sandy conditions moving around, you might be better served by transitioning to like a uh, hiking or outdoor type boot. Now these are a duty uh, boot that I wore for a while. These are Keens and actually these are Keens as well. And it may seem like I'm a Keen fanboy and I'm not. Uh, in reality, I really liked Keen shoes when I first got them several years ago and I think the quality has changed. But what I liked about them is they had a nice wide toe box and you can get them in a wide size so they fit me really well. But I'm finding that as I'm getting more recent pairs, it just seems like they're not holding up as good as they used to. So. Uh, I'm probably going to be switching. Uh, Solomon uh, doesn't carry a ton of wide stuff. Uh, Loa does. Um, there, there's a few other good quality brands, but basically now that these boots are starting to age, I'm going to probably be spending you know a couple hundred dollars on getting a good quality boot because again, I don't ever regret spending money. But you know, a good boot like this that can offer some toe protection, some ankle support, and that'll kind of help prevent you know, getting sand and gunk and stuff in there, and this will kind of hold up. It'll give you some traction at a class. Alternatively, you know, a duty type boot or a military type boot like this. Uh, these were a pair of training boots. These are Blackhawks. Um, and again, do I think they're the best boot out there? No, I happened to be sponsored by a store previously and Blackhawk was one of the brands. So I got these um, through my sponsorship. And they're a lightweight boot. They're not waterproof. The traction, they have a Vibram um, sole. So they actually, you know, are okay. Uh, but I think this is like my second or third pair of these boots because because they, you know, kind of fell apart. And you can actually, you know, even see if we get a, a close up here, um, you know, some of it is where they start to fall apart, where stuff is glued. Uh, I've had soles, you know, start to separate things like that. It just kind of happens as you wear boots. Yeah, you can start to see uh, this one is just starting to kind of wear here. And I've had issues where they where they wear and, and come apart too. So it kind of depends on how you wear them. But don't get too attached to a boot. It's a perishable item. You're going to need to get new boots eventually. But again, when it comes to classes, competitive shooting or whatever, please don't be afraid to invest in your feet. Start with a good quality sock, get a good shoe or a good boot, depending on what your preference is, but you want to have something with ankle support. Uh, it gives you good traction, allows you to run and move. Don't ever be afraid to spend good quality money on boots. It's something that we overlook. And I've seen guys spend thousands of dollars on their gun optics. They're investing their time and training and ammunition, everything else. And then they show up with, uh, you know, crappy apparel or crappy boots and it really kind of ruins their experience. So hope this is good conversation. If you have favorite pairs of boots, you know, please post them in the comment section below. I love hearing about good quality stuff. There's a few different brands that I'm looking at. I don't necessarily want to say get this, get that because I haven't worn that. Uh, again, I will just say that I've been a little, you know, disappointed with some of the more, more recent Keen purchases, although they are comfortable. They just haven't been holding up as well as I'd like. But, uh, you know, please sound off in the comment section below what your favorite footwear is, if you've had good luck or bad luck, so that can be informative to the other viewers. Make sure you're checking us out online, gunsandtactics.com. Please visit that. We have news. We have all sorts of updates, things that are industry related, our social media outlets. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and I believe now we're even on Pinterest. And of course, make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest content. We thank you very much for watching and have a great day.